something like this in the craft store and thought, oh my gosh, I could spin that into actual yarn. Well, that's what I thought when I saw this in the clearance bin at the craft store. Uh, so what I want to do is take you through my journey of spinning this down into yarn and very specifically applied yarn. <laughs> so um, this is uh, very thick. Uh, it's basically roving. It has no twist to it. Yes, you can knit with this with either really large knitting needles or um, just your hands and fingers. Uh, but that is not what I want to do with this. What I want to do is treat this like combed top uh, or roving and spin this into a two-ply yarn. So before we get into the actual spinning, let's talk about this um, roving here. I'm going to call it roving. <laughs> um, it's marketed as yarn, but I'm considering it roving. So I'm going to call it roving. Uh, but this is from Hobby Lobby. It's Yarn Bee Showstopper in the colorway Rainbow Riot. And I found this in the clearance bin when I went to Hobby Lobby. So you can see I got quite a deal on this here. So this is 10 ounces. It's 24 yards as is. Um, but basically, let's see, here we go. So it's 10 ounces, which is 284 grams. I went ahead and weighed the actual skein here. I took the label off. The skein itself is 289 grams, so just a little bit more than what's listed here. It is 65% acrylic, 35% polyamide. Um, so these are all synthetic fibers in here. Um, so I went ahead and took off a little bit of this roving so I could get a sense of a staple length. And let's see, let me get a ruler and measure this. Tape measure, that's what I can find. <laughs> so a staple length is... Let's say six inches, um, maybe seven, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a decent length there. So that means my hands are going to need to be um, at least like eight inches apart in order to be drafting this. So yeah, that is good to know. So first of all, I know this is made out of synthetic fibers, not natural. So that's going to affect the um, the way this drafts, the way this spins, the way the yarn will behave, um, will be affected by the material it's made out of. Um, I also know the staple length is roughly six inches. So that tells me about hand spacing with drafting um, and and perhaps how much twist is needed. Um, another thing to note is that this has a lot of colors. <laughs> I mean, the name is Rainbow Riot and it makes sense. So I went ahead and took a small um, sample of this fiber and I spun it up into a two-ply and I didn't do anything fancy with um, trying to control the colors, but I did do a, a little bit of a section where I, I 
tried to draft all the colors together and it really, you know, blends them together and as a lot of folks say, muddies the colors. Um, and then I also did some sections where I tried to get just blue and just yellow and just orange. Uh, and so I made a, a really quick little sample two-ply yarn and I knit it up into this very small swatch so I could get an idea of what that might look like. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. It's about a fingering weight yarn, which is my favorite weight of yarn to work with, so it makes sense to work towards spinning that. I particularly like the sections where you can see the different colors. You can see orange and blue and pink and purple. Um, although this purple, I think, no, there's purple in there. Um, and then this section here is where it's more muddied, where the colors are really blended together. And it has this really big pink overtone to it. Well, on that side's very orange, but all in all, if you stand back and, and kind of look at it with your eyes squinted, um, it overall looks pink. So it makes sense in the muddying, blending of the colors. It looks very pink. Now when you get up close, you can see, oh yeah, there's blue in there, and yellow, and orange, and, and that's fantastic, but if I'm knitting a hat or a sweater out of this, I don't want people's faces getting this close to me <laughs> to notice all the colors. So I think when I'm spinning this, um, I definitely want to keep the colors in mind. I don't want this. I want this. Um, so I need to think about what I want to do. Um, here's a little bit of leftover of the actual yarn not knit up. And, oops, dropped it. Yeah, I just think it's beautiful and it's very soft. Um, it was really easy to draft and spin. So I think this is going to be a fun project. But yeah, I wanted to see um, what, what might be happening with the colors so I can think about what kind of color management to be doing. Another thing to talk about is the tool on which I will be spinning this project, and that is my brand new Electric Eel Wheel Nano 2, which is my first ever electric spinning wheel, and I just got this, I think maybe a week ago, uh, and so this will be the first spinning project I'm doing on this electric wheel. Um, and I'm very excited to use this little guy. Um, it does, it is a nano. It is a very small uh, spinning wheel. So the bobbins are not going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to put all 10 ounces on one bobbin. Um, so I'm definitely going to be playing around with um, multiple bobbins and plying. So for color management, I was thinking about trying to pull out these colors and separate them, but they're just so blended in here. Um, there's blue here, there's blue here. It's not all together. Um, and so I just think that is going to be somewhat difficult to try to do that. So instead of um, separating the colors to maybe try to, you know, very intentionally get these different colors to show up, I think what I'm going to do is when pre-drafting this fiber, instead of pulling the whole roving apart and drafting this whole thing down to something thinner, I think I'll probably just you know, split it. So instead of drafting the whole thing to make it thinner, I'll just split it. So that way I'm still keeping, you know, these, this section of colors together, but then it'll be easier if I split it here, which it seems to naturally want to do. 
so that makes this thinner now. But now I've got, um, in relation to the thickness of this section now, the orange is a larger percentage of that, and the pink is a larger percentage of that. And so it'll be easier for me when I'm drafting and spinning to focus on, okay, I'm just trying to spin the pink, and then I'm just trying to spin the orange. Um, and so that way, if these get blended together, and of course they will, <laughs> um, it's not as much blending as drafting all of them together. So that's that's my thinking at this stage, is I'm going to try that as splitting the roving instead of drafting it to get thinner sections. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, like I said, I did basically nothing to have color management on here, and I still got, you know, specks of colors to show up. So I think it will be fine. Um... Yeah, I'm excited to start this project.
So I do this kind of backward drafting. So instead of pulling the, fo the fiber forward, what I do is I'm pulling um, with my right hand. I'm pulling the fiber supply backward. And what I do is I pinch it up here with my left hand. Uh, I pinch it right before I pull. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for thick spots. And so if there are thick spots, I'll try to pull them out. And so I'm backward drafting until I get the thickness I desire in the singles here. I am right-handed and so I'm holding the fiber supply in my right hand and I'm pinching with my left hand. So my right I don't know which hand is doing most of the work, honestly. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, this is how I spin. This is how I draft, I should say. This is how I draft. So the first bobbin is filled with singles, and so uh, this has 49 grams of fiber on it, and you can see that, yeah, the bobbin is pretty much full. I mean, I could have squeezed more on here, but that's fine, uh, and the colors are looking amazing in these singles. So what I've decided to do for the other ply, 
So I'm making a two ply yarn. Uh, I went ahead and broke off another 49 grams. So this will make up bobbin number two. And instead of splitting this um, down the middle or in thirds, what I'm going to do for the next ply is try to spin back and forth across here. Um, I'm, it's something I'm not very skilled at, uh, but hopefully this will help me practice that. Um, usually what happens is I end up spinning down a strip of it and then there's, you know, extra bit here that's bundled up in my hand and then I have to reattach it and then, and so I end up spinning down in strips anyway. So what I'm going to try to do is spin across back and forth. So I'll get this blue and yellow and then pinks and oranges and then be coming back. Um, and so that's what I'm going to try on the second ply. We will see how it goes. This is the second singles, my second bobbin that I'm working on. And so the drafting is going okay, where I'm trying to go uh, side to side across the fiber. I feel like this works better with a like a short forward draft. So I'm kind of doing a short forward draft. Um, but what I usually do is have my left hand, I mean, you saw it before, I have my left hand pinching way up here. And so it's not helping to grab the fibers, but I feel like when you're working side to side, that's kind of what is needed, is for these fingers to be grabbing, you know, the new fibers. So I'm basically, instead of pulling, pulling forward, I am still pulling backward. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but I'm keeping my left hand close to the drafting triangle so that my fingers can be grabbing the fibers nearby. And so I feel like it's going okay. Um, I'm certainly better at going across in one direction versus the other. I'm trying to go backwards right now. Um, so what I've been doing, yeah, that's, that's challenging, um, is just turning the fiber over so that I can go across the same direction. So it's looking like going from the left to the right is what's easiest for me, at least at this point. And so... That's what I'm doing. There are certainly some points where I'm not working across and the fiber gets all bunched up and whatever. <laughs> I'm just going with the flow and just taking this as an opportunity to practice drafting. Um, side to side. And so I feel like I'm getting better at it. So that's good. So I'm definitely noticing part of the part of this technique requires that you keep 
these fibers spread out horizontally um, so that it's easy to grab the fibers nearby. Um, and when I'm spinning, I do get um, sort of clammy hands <laughs> and that warmth and moisture certainly makes the fiber want to uh, bunch up rather than staying you know, fluffy and spread out. So I do find that I'm having to um, you know, be mindful of that and take a break if I need to or you know wipe wipe my hands on my <laughs> on my bathrobe or my pants or whatever and just um, make sure that I'm not getting warm and moist hands on the fiber and it is very warm in my hand like this fiber is holding the heat of my hand so it's not just that <laughs> you know it's not hot in the house it's not warm weather and I'm, I'm sweaty because of that it's um, a lot of it is that this fiber is holding the heat which is good that's what I want it to do um, but uh, that does make my my hand a little clammy sometimes but yeah so you can see I'm I'm Finding it easiest to work left to right um, across the fiber supply. And uh, I'm just doing a short backward draft. Um, sometimes even a little combo move where I'm, I'm pulling my left hand forward and the fiber back. Um, so kind of pulling them away from each other. And to be honest, because I'm being, um, I'm spending a lot of brain power focusing on this drafting, that um, I'm not sure that I'm making this this single as thin as the first one. So I think I am spinning this just a little bit thicker. Um, so is kind of a lot for me to be thinking about because I'm thinking about the color, I'm thinking about this drafting, I'm thinking about uh, the thickness of this yarn that I'm creating, um, I'm thinking about don't get sweaty hands. <laughs> um, and then of course during a lot of this spinning um, we're watching something on the television so uh, I'm also thinking about whatever show we're watching, <laughs> so um, it is a lot to keep track of at this point, but like I said, I'm taking this as an opportunity to um, practice a different way of drafting here, and I'm really enjoying it, and I think this yarn is going to look really neat when it's finished. I finished spinning the second bobbin of singles and um, before I take it off of the machine I just want to show you that I didn't quite spin all of it I have just the small amount left um, but the bobbin seems uh, a little more full than the previous bobbin so I thought well you know I'm eventually gonna spin all of it up anyway so I broke this off so that will go over there um, but yeah let's take this bobbin off the spinning wheel Move the drive band and I'll loosen the tension. And I'll take that off of there. And then we'll lift out. Let me just wrap this over here. 
just lift this whole unit off of here and then we'll take out the bobbin off the flare so there it is now upon close inspection in fact let me move the camera to get a little bit better angle with the light here Upon closer inspection, here's the second bobbin, and compared to the first bobbin, let's see if we can get it to focus. I don't know if you can tell, but this second bobbin, it looks like I put in more twist than when I was spinning the first bobbin. And admittedly, I did mess with the speed um, between the two, so maybe you could... Maybe you can tell, but the second bobbin has, uh, these singles have more twist in them than this first bobbin. So that's something I need to keep in mind, um, is trying to get that consistency with the amount of twist. Um, and we'll see how that turns out, uh, how that affects the plying. Uh, but yeah, both of these bobbins are pretty full. So I'm going to put them on my Lazy Kate, and I'll show you my, <laughs> my homemade Lazy Kate is a basket from uh, Dollar Tree, and I have two straight knitting needles, and I fasten them on the other side with clothespins so that they don't um, slide around very much, in fact, so they don't slide out. <laughs> Um, and for the most part, this does just fine. I had a piece of uh, cotton string that I would lay across, oh, it was back here, um, to help tension. Uh, but two things, it was a little too tight, so I really had to pull on the singles quite, uh, with more tension than I wanted to, so half the time I didn't use it. And then because it was so tight, the cotton thread I had across here, actually cotton yarn, uh, was fraying. <laughs> uh, so I've just removed that. But yeah, these are bobbins for my uh, Ashford traditional wheel. So I'm going to put these bobbins on here and then we can get plying.
you can see my setup here, I've got the uh, spinning wheel on the table. I'm sitting in a chair. I've got my laser cape on the floor. And it's on my right side. Again, I'm right-handed, so I'm using my right hand to keep a finger in between the two plies. Um, that way I can keep them separated. And then my left hand, I'm pinching the twist and moving it forward. Then I slide my fingers down. But what that allows me to do is when I have this pinched with my left hand, I can pull it taut with my right hand and I can pull out any um, curly cues or things like that. And then I can catch it before um, it, get, it gets plied with the other strand. Because honestly, uh, see there's a curly cue right there. I'm going to pull it out. I don't know if you could see that, but yeah. flying takes less time than actual spinning. Um, and you'll notice that I'm pausing to let this build up twist before I pull out the next length here. And yes, I could speed up the spinning wheel so that I'm not sitting here waiting for the twist to build up. But I like having it be just a little bit slower than what I need so that if I need time to pull out a curly cue or deal with some kind of tangle or whatever, that it gives me more time to do that. Um, plus I don't have, um, I don't have any tension on my lazy key here, so it does mean my plies are a little bit more prone to developing those curly cues. Because I don't have tension between my hands and the bobbin. Um, it's allowed to lay here freely. And as I look down, I can see curly cues forming in my singles here. So it is important that I give myself time to deal with those um, deal with those things. And since my two bobbins of singles are both full to the max, I will not be able to take these two onto one bobbin. <laughs> so I do have <clears throat> a second bobbin all ready to go. Because I think I'll need two. Possibly more than two. I don't know, but um, I have six bobbins total that came with my spinning wheel. Two gray, two blue, and two green. And you can see I put some of the extra bobbins here in the Lazy Kate. Uh, just because the basket is two bobbins wide. These are smaller bobbins than I use on my Ashford traditional. And so this way the bobbins aren't going to be moving around this way very much, just spinning around. Uh, so I'll probably want to find a smaller basket to use uh, as a lazy cape for these bobbins. But for now I'm just going to use this one. It's working fine. Um, but yeah, if I needed to have 
uh, more bobbins in use, then this might not work for me. So I've plied up two bobbins here from my first two bobbins of singles and I still have more left, like quite a bit. So I'm going to need at least one more bobbin to ply. Um, yeah. I'm really pleased with how this is turning out. Um, I did get a few a few curly cues got past me into the yarn, but that's okay. It gives it character. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep plying and uh, see how much I get. Happy New Year! Yeah, it's January 2023 now. 
Uh, so this spin took me through all of December and into January to complete. Now I do want to say that that's actually a short timeline for me to complete the spinning project. And the reason I was able to get it done in about six weeks is because uh, I'm an educator and we get usually three weeks off in December uh, for the winter break. And so I wasn't working <laughs> for a good portion of this spinning project. So I was able to spend many hours in a day just sitting in my craft room spinning. So please don't feel like this is an, a project that it's expected to take um, only a few weeks to complete. Uh, during the school year, this would definitely take me a lot longer. Uh, but that being said, I'm really happy to be finished with this spinning project because I really want to cast on a project with the yarn. But before we talk about casting on knitting, crocheting, weaving, whatever project, uh, I want to tell you about the yarn that I made. So let's switch the camera around and let's get a good close-up look at the yarn. So here we are. All of the yarn that I spun up for this project, well, plus this. <laughs> These, um, this I bracelet plied, Andean plied, I don't know what the correct term is, um, but just leftover things on the bobbins, uh, plus whatever I made for my sample before uh, completing the whole project. Uh, but yeah, it's all here. Uh, all the skeins have labels on them except this one. Um, this was the last skein I finished. I just need to get my other slip of paper and get it in here. So, um, yeah, you can see the colors. Um, I do apologize. It is, I do live in the Pacific Northwest and it's a typical Pacific Northwest wintry day today. And that is cloudy and rainy. Uh, but I really want to get this video put together for you all. So we are going to just go with that weather. Um, yeah, the colors are great. It is very much an overall pink tone. Pink is not my favorite color, so we'll see how this knits up. Uh, but yes, it's beautiful. So on each of the skeins, they have a tag and so I put um, the colorway name here is Rainbow Riot, and that's just from the, let me get it, the original tag here, Rainbow Riot. And uh, this yarn is 65% acrylic, 35% polyamide, again, just from the, the uh, composition of the fiber here. And this skein here weighs 34 grams and it contains 243 yards so I have a tag like this on each of my skeins and the back side I just track um, when I finish spinning this so this one I finished in December uh, and then I just like to keep track of how many plies and what directions so I spun the singles in the clockwise direction and plied in the counterclockwise direction and yeah I'm very happy with this yarn so all in all I have um, 10 skeins in here really there's nine I, I wrote this down as number 10 <laughs> but I have nine good size skeins and what I did is I've got a little notebook here I keep track of some of my projects in and here's the page I've got every skein written down here, not in any particular order. I did not write these down like in the order that I applied them or anything. It was just after I finished all the skeins, I just went through and tallied them all up. So I spun a total 
of 1,802 yards, which should be enough to make a garment. Should be plenty. Uh, the weight, if I add up all the weights of the skeins, 283 grams. Um, and that's with rounding, you know, on the scale. Uh, we started with 289. Oh, actually, hang on a second. This was left over. Um, I was spinning up the last two bobbins of singles, and both of them were uh, very full and a bit overloaded, and I thought, you know, I'll just save this little bit for the next time. I have two more skeins of this stuff to go through, so um, I can save that for the next batch. But uh, yeah, so there's a little bit I didn't get to, so 283 grams overall, and so of course I did the math, because I'm a mathematically inclined person, and so uh, the yards per pound is 2,906. Keeping in mind, the composition of the fiber is acrylic and polyamide, so I can't really use information on wool yards per pound to help me with this. But when I use my uh, wraps per inch tool, we can see that this is a fingering weight yarn. So let me grab that. So I got my wraps per inch tool. And so basically, uh, this is one inch, and I'm going to wrap the yarn around. And you just want to count how many uh, threads fill up one inch. And then what's handy is that there's a nice count here. So if there are between five and six wraps in here, in the one inch, then this would be a super bulky yarn right and so what I'm shooting for is fingering weight down here 14 to 16 so I took that smallest skein of yarn and wrapped it up into a ball so that we could check this out and I did learn that when when you're wrapping the yarn around here you want to be mindful of your tension so if you pull this yarn really taut, you'll notice it gets thinner. So when you're wrapping around here, you don't want the yarn to be really tight and stretched out. You want to keep it loose, which for me <laughs> makes this challenging to wrap. So I'm just going to start like this, and then slide, because it doesn't need to be tight this way, but you just want to lay the strands of the yarn um, next to each other. Again, we want to see how many fit in one inch, so you don't want to leave a bunch of gaps in between the strands, but you also don't want them um, bunched up so that one is on top of the other. And of course, this is just giving us an idea because there are parts of the spin where the strands are thicker and some parts where they're thinner. Fit that last one in there. Yeah, okay, so let's let's go with that. And look at those colors. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited to work with this. Okay. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Look at that right in that fingering range. So, yay, we did it. Thanks for joining me on this spinning journey. I really had a lot of fun with this project, learning how to use my electric spinning wheel 
um, learning how to work with uh, acrylic fiber as opposed to wool or cotton. Uh, I really enjoyed myself. It really helped that the fiber was bright and colorful to work on during uh, winter months when it's uh, dark and dreary outside. Uh, it really brought a lot of joy. Uh, so if you like seeing content like this over on the D Hard House channel, uh, you know, let me know in the comments down below, or you can always just hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next videos. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye!